just finished our service about 20 minutes ago here at City Church of Dallas. What a mighty move of God we had. I'm so glad that through our media ministry that we can come into your home, into your hotel room, into your hospital room, and wherever you are. You might even just listen while you're driving on your phone. And I'm asking you to join with us. If you've enjoyed this ministry, one third of our church's income and for our ministry's income comes from you watching online. So just go to City Church of Dallas, C-I-T-I-C-H-U-R-C-H of Dallas.com and click on donate and give securely on PayPal or call that number and give over the phone. We appreciate you so much. Thank you for joining us and watching and being a part of our City Church family. 26 pounds. 26 pounds. So I got a call that from Alex. I think it was in a different state or something. Um, I got a call from Alex, our media pastor, that um, Steve was in serious condition. Um, uh, heart, liver, it was bad news. So I went up to um, the hospital, Medical City, and even one time within a week, um, at least once, they lost him and they had to bring him back and they were able to bring him back. But it ended up being a, a really bad gallbladder that affected all the other organs, pancreatitis, and some major, major stuff. And so, um, you know, Steve has been here with us for probably two and a half years, pretty close, and uh, running the cameras with Alex, and we have missed him. We're so, we, we are, all of you prayed. Isn't it awesome to see this man? I just want to thank everybody for their prayers and uh, thoughts and visits. Uh, Miss Maddie, uh, a few people came up and saw me, and uh, I just really appreciate that. Um, just glad to be back and uh, glad to be alive. Thank God. So our music director, um, I was just trying to tell you, our music director is in... Um, Port of Ayala, suffering through missionary work on the beach down there. So, um, so Mark is here with us. We love you, Mark. And of course, our darling Danielle, but this is the beginning. Pop it around. And Larry, what were you not, Larry? So, um, Corey, where's Corey? Corey, how many were you with Corey the other day? Come, Corey, come up here. I cannot see you. And you got a new nine month old. He does this. He's in the wrong church. sat at that piano, I think we had about, uh, uh, some, yeah, I, I think we had about 2,500 views of a little video that Angie took on her phone, and J. Lowe's producer said how much he loved your play and how much it touched him. Isn't that crazy? So I, somewhere in the world. So while we're finishing getting ready here with the music and the sound and stuff, we had to sit up the last minute. Why don't you just, I don't know, play a song?
Sylvia, we have been praying for you like crazy. I mean, you had a really bad time in the hospital. And um, I came up there about three or four times, but you didn't know it because you were asleep. But I just want you to know how much I love you and how precious you are to the City Church family. Christopher and Ethan and Fernando and Christine. You make beautiful kids and grandbabies, I'll tell you that right now. So, um, but you know, Fernando and Christine, um, for four and a half years, ran our um, HIV residence um, food ministry called uh, Supper Club Ministries. Phenomenal, served, made, prepared, served and led that ministry for us thousands of meals. And we love you so much. You're such a special part of this family. Welcome home. This is your first time in our new sanctuary, isn't it? Welcome home. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, Jesus. You know what the minister of music of this house, the morning church, the owner of this church, of the minister of music, phenomenal lady is here. Just come up, come up here really quick if you would and greet us. I love your talent. I love your beautiful Thank you. And, and Jeff and uh, Kenny and Kate, yes, came and sang for our church a couple of weeks ago, and it was just so fabulous, and it was so wonderful to have you there. And we're just so happy that you can all worship here. It's great. Thank you. Take the hand of the one next to you.
I'm going to love Donna Lloyd. Watching our church three years ago, we've never been the same since.
you. Donna, it's good to have you here. Staying on our team for uh, a couple of years, and now she's about to start singing on our team again. Isn't she precious? Amen. You know, um, when we moved into this building, after um, we were moved out of another church, literally kicked out because they didn't like our demographic. Um, this church within days opened up their arms, opened up their hearts, and we moved in here. And we have been, as a church body, we have been through a lot. As a pastor, as congregants, we, we've just been through a lot as a church body. It's been difficult. It's been hard. But, you know, through all that we've been through, God is molding us and making us and shaping us. And God has a way to turn really difficult situations. Some of the things you've been through, Fernando, God has a way of turning really difficult situations and making us better. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. And when the Lord laid on my heart to start City Church, I had no four and a half, four years and eight months ago, five years ago, we started August 2nd, 2011, I had no earthly idea of what our church would look like, what we'd go through, how expensive it would be, um, how when, when I, when revelatory ideas and thoughts came into my mind, how God loves and accepts and, and believes in is there for everybody. Uh, it really, my whole mind began to change and my whole thought process began to change. And I found that evangelical Christians, fundamentalism, fundamentalist Christians that I came from, no longer wanted me. Didn't want us anymore. And through all of that, I've watched how God has worked all of this out. I had a, a wonderful message in Luke 18 prepared and I, I don't I have felt for the last it may seem kind of unorganized because we were we didn't have a regular amount of time here to get ready our ministry music is gone you're awesome Mark but so things may seem unorganized and, and not only with the setup but with I've got to obey God and not just preach what I had planned but I feel something else churning in my spirit to talk to you about is that all right And here's the deal. When I moved from Florida, from Orlando to Dallas, on my way here, I, I stopped at a, um, in New Orleans, I stopped at a church to do a revival, a three-day revival. And they put me in the hotel. This is on my way here. And God was working something in they put me in a hotel, and I got to the hotel, the front desk, the real tall hotel down on Canal Street, Celia. And they said, Mr. Ferguson, you're here for three days, and we're out of rooms. And I said, okay, but we have a presidential suite on the top floor. I said, all right. And... And uh, I said, how much is that? And she said, $1,200. I said, this is a little church that's having me here to minister, and there's no way they're going to pay $1,200 for her. They may not even pay me $1,200. And, and she said, no, 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 we're not going to charge you more. We can't help it. But this, this is the only room we have tonight. We're here for three days, and tomorrow night we have more rooms open up. And I said, so you're moving tomorrow? And she says, no, 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 we're not going to make you move. Just stay in that presidential suite your whole trip. And I went, okay. So you had to have a special key. I think if I remember right, it's a 26th floor. And you had to have a special key to get to the 26th floor. So I went to the 26th floor. And um, I went to the 26th floor. And 
At the end of the hall was two double doors. I went down to the two double doors and it had a, a brass plaque that said presidential suite. I opened it up and there were the there was this tile floor and then there was this big living room and this big formal dining room. That's a corner suite. There were two more double doors that went into a giant master bedroom suite and then two more double doors that went into this incredible marble and gold bathroom with the largest shower with the most the, the biggest garden tub I had ever seen. I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I was meant to live. <laughs> remember, it was on my way to start City Church on my trip here. So I um, I went downstairs and I sat at the bar to eat. I was eating a burger. And next to me there were these two women. And they were talking a hundred miles an hour. And they, I think they had a little drink. And, and one said how much she hated Sarah Palin. And the other one said how much she uh, despised TV preachers and she hated Republicans and, and going on and on and on. And, and how much she hated church and faith preachers and especially the TV preachers, she hated it all. I'm just sitting there and listening, and she turns to me, one of her me, she said, so, what do you do? <laughs> and I just did that, I couldn't do it. I couldn't say it, so I said, I'm a songwriter. <laughs> she said, what kind of songs do you write? And I said, I write, I write gospel songs. And I'm going to Dallas to start a church. I'm a minister. I'm here in New Orleans in revival. She went, oh, we are so sorry for the way we've been talking. Please forgive us. And I said, but I'm thinking about not being Republican anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 um, so. And then her friend, and I realized they were together. Do you know what I mean? And then her friend said, um, well, she's just so upset. Because we've asked, she's gone and asked every, we're here on vacation, she's asked every preacher of every church in Peoria, Illinois, to baptize her. She's had a lifelong dream of being baptized. And no one will baptize her because of us. And I went, really? She went, really? And, I, and so we're just upset. We're angry. We're mad. And I said, well, why do you want to be baptized? And she said, all my life I've wanted to be baptized. She says, because I want my sins to be forgiven. And I thought, and I saw the sincerity in her eyes. I don't know that being baptized forgives your sins, but I saw that she wanted to make a commitment to the Lord. And I said, I'll baptize you. And she said, okay, really? I said, yes. I had no heart to tell her. I'd never baptized anyone before. And looking back, remembering the, the church I was at, it was a new contemporary church. They didn't have a baptism, baptism hall. And, and she said, she said, did that church you're at have a baptism hall? And I went, no. I said, but I'm in the presidential suite. <laughs> and there's a baptismal in my master suite. It's a giant garden tub. And I would love to baptize you. So she met, they both met me the next day on the 26th. Well, I had to go down to the lobby and bring them up. We went in there, and I had, I didn't know how to do it. I'd never baptized anybody before, and I was short on supplies, so I went to CVS and got some white candles and lit them, and I had a ter white terry cloth robe they had in there as my vestments. <laughs> and uh, I walked her through the whole thought press process of what Jesus did for us, how he died, how he was raised again, and how faith in Jesus Christ absolutely is causes you the infilling of the Holy Spirit causes Jesus and the Father and I will come and take a road in you our body becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit right and I told her all about that if she would just receive this free gift
I said, it's already done. You don't have to do anything. It's already done. So I prayed with her. She had a deep voice. And she said, okay, I'll do that. I said, just pray with me. I said, dear Jesus. She went, dear Jesus. Please forgive me of all that I've done. I sat and prayed with her for the next few minutes, and I would watch with my own eyes the Spirit of the Lord fill her body. And I took her into that bathroom, in that giant garden tub that God had arranged for me to have. And I baptized her. And they're still in contact with me five years later. It's amazing what the Lord did in front of my eyes, confirming that this gospel, in my heart that was already working, this gospel leaves nobody out. Amen. It's a whosoever will gospel. So, then little Donna came on Mother's Day. Well, it's Sunday before Mother's Day. Can I tell it? Little dog right there. Our little Danielle was in Africa the Sunday before Mother's Day, and she got stuck, Ty Misha. So Ty was playing for Danielle. And she brought her mom right there, Donna, who sat in the front row. And Donna uh, was singing on that front row. We only had five rows. We had 1,450 square feet foot sanctuary. Remember that one with the green walls? And I said, um, I said, where do you live? She said, I stay at Austin Street. I said, where's that? She said, baby, I'm homeless. Oh, what? Because she looked just like that. And it's not what I knew or thought. And I said, Dee, call that Austin Street and invite Donna to be here next Sunday. And maybe a friend of hers, because we're having a Mother's Day dinner before church and see if they'll come. We got a phone call two days later and from Austin Street, and Donna had signed up 47 homeless moms. They were in the shelter. <laughs> and we picked them up in a caravan of cars. They were on Hickory Street. And there were a bunch of men on the curb that wanted to come, but we couldn't accommodate. Celia, you were there. Mary Ann, you were there. Remember that? Our lives have forever been changed by a ministry, by a church where I really see everybody not up the same, not, not income, not where you live, not who you love, not even what you believe. You may be Baptist, you may be Presbyterian, you may be Catholic, you may be Pentecostal, you may be United Church of Christ. You may have a real broad thought or a real narrow view of God and humanity. But if you believe in Jesus, you belong here. Amen. You belong with me. Amen. You belong with this place. So four and a half years of struggle later and victories and awesome things happening, we go into this building and our first weekend here the Lord speaks to me and he says, My house shall be called a house of prayer. Um, come here. Come here. If you would, yeah. Go to the keyboard, please. My house shall be called a house of prayer. Kenny. And I looked it up in the scripture. And I found out what that meant. So can I tell you about three minutes? Is that all right? Four minutes? So I looked it up, and I thought it was just after the Palm Sunday thing we celebrate, where they lay the palms down. It said, Hosanna, Hosanna. Um, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Remember that? In Jerusalem when Jesus came in, I thought that's what it was all about. And then after that, Jesus said, he turned over the money changers table and said, you've made this a den of thieves. For my house shall be called a house of prayer. You made it a den of thieves. I thought it was about money in the church. 
And I thought it was the only time it happened. But it also happened earlier in Jesus' ministry, after his first miracle, public miracle of the wedding at Cana, he did the same thing. And I looked it up in the scripture, and it said that Jesus was... Upset and angry, and turned over the money changes because they were selling, buying and selling, they were selling redemption. They were selling doves and oxen and sheep. If you look at both places, it tells you all of that. Jesus, to the temple people that worked in the temple, the ministers, the scholars, he said, I thought he just said it off the top of his head from his heart. He said, my, it is said, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you've made the dinner things. It is said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. So it was a quote from Isaiah. So if you want to know the context of what kids are going, by kids, if you want to know the context of what Jesus was saying, we had a lesson prepared for you. Sorry, I got it all mixed up. Go ahead, kids. Sorry. This is a message, by the way. I'm not preaching twice. Jesus said, My house shall be called, it is said, My house shall be called a house of prayer, and you made it a den of thieves. So what he was saying, you have to go to Isaiah 56, and Jesus was saying, all of these people, he was quoting the Lord, saying, all these people are left out. Okay? Eunuchs are left out. Foreigners are left out of the temple. Anybody that is not a Jew is left out. Anybody that's illegitimate, does not have a, a, a father, is left out. None of these people could worship in the temple. And then Jesus arrives at the temple, and if you don't have the money to buy these sacrifices, you are also not allowed in the temple. And if you just refuse to buy these sacrifices, you are not allowed in the temple. So it wasn't about money. It was about exclusion that Jesus was so upset about. When he said... My it is said, my house shall be called a house of prayer, and you have made it into the things, thieves. He was talking about the masses of people that were excluded from worshiping in the house of God. And the scripture that Jesus took that from in Isaiah 56, that scripture says that all of those people, their sacrifices would be acceptable, and they would have a name that is greater than sons and daughters. They are welcomed inside my walls of my house. God leaves nobody out. Religion excludes people. Jesus welcomes all. When God spoke to my heart that my house shall be called a house of prayer, as I was in this place, I knew that God was raising up a people and a work and a ministry and a house and a church that would be in line with actually the host church here that owns this church that has the same heart. This is a whosoever will church. All ye that are hungry, all ye that are thirsty, come and drink. Jesus went out of his way to go to preach people that others left out. He went to the woman at the well that had been married five times, excluded the woman of Samaria. They were looked at like dogs in a whole different class than the Jews. And yet, and yet, Jesus, the Bible says, I must needs go through Samaria. Jesus felt compelled to go to reach this one person that was left out of the people of worship of the house of God. Aren't you glad that our Savior, that our Jesus, welcomes everybody into the house of God? Hallelujah! So that week we moved in here, we wrote this song. Hallelujah. No one's excluded. All are included. Gentile or Jew.
Let me leave you with one thing. Luke 18. Just touch on it. Then Jesus spoke a parable to them that men and women always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying, There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. There was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Get justice for me for my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said with himself, Though I do not fear God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles, troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. I just want to leave you with this today. And uh, where Mark go? Mark, come up here if you would. I want to leave you with this today. This is what I have prepared. I'm going to just give you a nugget of it. Don't stop praying. Don't stop asking God. You have a helper. Jesus said, I go to the Father, but I send a comforter, a helper. We have a helper. God is here to help us. And though you may have asked God before, like that persistent widow, widow to that unjust judge, and women did not have a place in that society. It was. They had a place that was really way below men. And women could have a property. A widow was poor. The poorest, one of the poorest groups in that society. Yet she was persistent to an unjust judge and granted her wish. Jesus said this and said with it, don't get weary praying. It was so important to Jesus that he wanted you to know that even though you have prayed and you have asked God, even though you said, God, I need your help in this, I need your intervention, don't, and you may not have seen it, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. The Bible says you have not because you have asked not. Jesus said in Matthew 18, he said, whatsoever you ask, it shall be done by the Father which is in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. Again, I say to you, whatever you agree on is concerning, is touching, anything that you ask, it shall be done by the Father which is in heaven. Sometimes things are delayed. Sometimes they don't on our timetable. But God answers prayer. Sometimes you're praying for a sick one, but the sick one goes on to be with the Lord. Yes. Well, guess what? They're not sick anymore. Sometimes you, you pray about someone else, what they're doing, and they still are doing what they're doing, and it didn't change. Well, God could have changed someone's will, but God will work the situation for their good and your good. God has a way. You have to believe what Jeremiah said. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are to prosper you. They are not to harm you. They are for a future and a hope. You have to believe what John the Beloved said. He said, Beloved, above all things, I want you to prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. You have to believe like Abraham, who climbed Mount Moriah and lifted the night to slay his son. And the angel said, stop. And the angel looked, and there was provision in the form of a ram caught in the thicket. Yes. The whole time Abraham was climbing Mount Moriah, he had no idea, he could not see that God had provided for him. Just because you cannot see the provision it does not mean that God has not provided. Just because you cannot see the provision, it does not mean that God has not already provided. Keep praying. Keep believing God. Give me that. Call upon the name of the Lord. Jesus 
and you want to pray for that, be persistent in your prayer. Don't give up on God. Don't give up before the breakthrough. But if you need to need God to move in this relationship or these relationships, lift up your hand. God is a restorer. God can work in ways and send His Spirit before us. Right now, I speak restoration. To restore is the establishment of something new that is greater than before. I speak restoration into these relationships, into these situations. In the name of Jesus.
as a reporter of those that diligently seek them. God loves you. You're acceptable right now just the way you are. You don't have to get good enough for God. God loves you and receives you right now. Do that. So it's time to sow. It's time to give. I want to encourage everybody to give and sow in the house of God. You know, some people know this, but just on our homeless ministry, give any idea how much we spend a month? Any guess? Five thousand dollars a month. Five thousand dollars. Hallelujah. Now this Saturday, but the next Saturday, we're stretching our, our faith out, and we're going to New Orleans. For all the people under the bridges in New Orleans and the little shanties, we're having a live unplugged worship service and we are um, reaching hundreds of people that live under those bridges in downtown New Orleans. I'm so excited about that. God is so good. So I'm asking everybody in this place just to so out of the generosity of your heart, whatever you want to give, whatever you want to sow. If you're watching online, go to City Church of Dallas, C-I-T-I, C-H-U-R-C-H of Dallas.com. Give securely on PayPal. If you need an envelope for a cash receipt or you want to go on your credit card or debit card, lift up your hand really high and they'll bring an envelope right now. If you're writing a check, make it to City Church. And in about three or four minutes into this song, they're going to come and receive the Lord's tithe and your offering. Thank you for giving. How many are here for the first time right now? You, 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 you. Well, today's a different day for us. It was different, but I'm so glad you are here. It's so special that you are here. Thank you for being here. Are any of you from the host church here? Let me see your hand. We love you. We love you. We love you. And we pray at you, and we pray over sinful congregational church. Amen. So this is for you.
awesome. I speak the blessing of God over your life. And I decree that even though you may have been in a bad season, seasons change. I speak the blessing of God, a season of blessing over your life, over your loved ones. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. I love you. We just finished our service about 20 minutes ago here at City Church of Dallas. What a mighty move of God we had. I'm so glad that through our media ministry that we can come into your home, into your hotel room, into your hospital room, and wherever you are. You might even just listen while you're driving on your phone. And I'm asking you to join with us. If you've enjoyed this ministry, one third of our church's income and for our ministry's income comes from you watching online. So just go to City Church of Dallas, C I T I C H U R C H of Dallas.com and click on donate and give securely on PayPal or call that number and give over the phone. We appreciate you so much. Thank you for joining us and watching and being a part of our City Church family.